So, hello and welcome to another lesson in our study of topology 1. So, in this video, we'll be talking about metrics and information, and we will consider the Hamming distance. Then, in our next video, we'll talk about the Levenstein distance. Okay, so um, please don't forget to like the video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't so that you'll be notified of future videos. So, thank you, and let's start. And if you want to watch the previous video, you can always find the link in the description area. Okay. So, a quick introduction. You know, metric spaces are used in numerous applications involving the storage, manipulation, and presentation of information. So, strings of symbols, like the letters making up the words, you read here are the basic information units. In any situation where we wish to measure the similarities and differences between information units, an appropriate metric can be found to do so. So in this section, we will look at two particular examples. So we will look at one in this first video and the other one in the second video, which will be on the Levenstein distance. So in the first, the information units are transmitted binary codes. And in the second, the information units are sequences of letters modeling nucleotide strands in a DNA molecule. Okay, so this is just an introduction. We tells us about how we can apply metric spaces. So know that in our previous video, we talked about metric spaces. All right, so... Um, we will talk about how to measure the difference and the similarities using two concepts. And the two concepts are the Harman distance and the Levenstein distance. Okay, so in this video, we'll talk about the first concept, that's the Harman distance. Then in this next video, we'll talk about the second concept, the Levenstein distance. So, let's talk about the Hamming distance, which is very simple to, it's very, very simple. So, let's take a definition. So, it says, the Hamming distance between two words of length n is the number of places in which the words differ. Alright, so, we are going to use this binary code to um, illustrate what we are trying to say from the definition. So the key point that you have to take note is that when it comes to the Hamming distance between two ways, they have to be of equal length, right? So the two ways that um, we are finding the Hamming distance, they have to be of equal length. So for instance, we can find a Hamming distance between cat and dog because they are of the same length, three each. But we can't find a Hamming distance between a car and let's say um woman. You could see they are of different lengths. One is of length three, the other five. Okay, so when it comes to the Hamming distance, the first thing you have to check is that the ways are of equal length and then we check for the number of places in which the ways differ and that becomes the distance very simple so let's just take this example so we have our x to be given by these binary codes and our y to be given by this as such so you could see that the length of x is let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine and for y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So they are of equal lengths. So that means that we can find a Hamming distance between them. So the next thing to check is, we have to check for the places in which they differ. So you can see here we have 0, 0. But here we have 0 and 1. So they differ here. Here we have 1 and 0. They differ. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. They differ here as well. Then 1, 1, 0, 0. So, you can see that x and y differ in the second 
ten and the seven places, right? So they differ in three places. Hence, the how many distance? So how many distance is um, given by the? Then we have um, subscript h. So between x and y is three, right? So that's the how many distance. You know, it's very very simple. Okay. So let's just take a second example. So example two, we have x to be given by this word, Rindolf. Then we have y to be given by this word here, Rindolf. Right? So the question says you should find a harming distance between x and y. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is that these two ways are they of equal length? So let's find out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what about y? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they are of equal length. So that means we can go ahead to find the places in which they differ. Okay. So you can see that um the second place this is E, this is A. They differ here. And when it comes to the seventh place too, we have L and R. So they differ here as well. So that means that the harming distance between these two S is two. Alright, so solution. We could see that X and Y differ in the second and seventh places. So hence the harming distance between those two ways is two. And I know that's very simple to understand. So we've talked about the harming distance, which is very simple to understand, okay. So um the next thing we are going to talk about is the Levenstein distance. And we will talk about that in the next video. Okay. So please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. So thank you very much.